Hi, everybody. When I was around seven, my mother gave me a book of cartoons to pass the time of, and some paper and pencil and to, to just pass the time as a kid. I was about seven. And I started tracing them and I realized I could make her smile. And then I was kind of hooked from there on out. I really wanted to keep drawing cartoons. Plus I was really painfully shy. They were worried about me. I was not, I, I didn't like to talk. Um, so I feel like I, cartoons for me were, served two purposes. I could spend time by myself and people wouldn't bother me. And then I could also uh, say things with the cartoons and make people happy. I went to college and I studied biology because I, I liked biology. I wanted to be like park ranger or something. And um, I was not good at chemistry. So I, I, I kept drawing cartoons and eventually majored in art and uh, got a job in New York City at, the, at a museum, which was really great. Uh, that was a great job, but I didn't want to do that for a living. So I just kept drawing cartoons and submitting them to magazines. And we slowly got to realize that I could sell, sell cartoons. I was living in New York, this was in the 70s, late, well, early 80s, and um, I loved New York City, so it was, I loved being there, and I had friends from college that were there, and I got to meet cartoonists, and selling cartoons was, was just a, kind of exciting, um, even though I didn't make a lot of money at first, I still don't make a lot of money, but I, I make money now, <laughs> um, but it was, it was exciting to, to sell, the first time I sold to the New Yorker, it was a thrill, real thrill. It's, it's a strange, really strange system, at least with the New Yorker. They've been doing, you know, the New Yorker is really old. It's almost a century old. It's, it was founded in 1925, and they've always had cartoons. Um, it started out as a humor magazine. And the system has always been, from what we know, um, where the cartoonists, and they're probably, I'm guessing, around 50 of us that submit on a regular basis. We send in um, cartoons every week, rough, rough drafts of ideas, and... Um, the New Yorker either buys one or they don't. I think what's good about that system is that it, it, uh, it forces you to draw what you think is funny. And hopefully they will think it's funny too, and then they'll buy it. So if you're, if you're working for somebody else and somebody else is telling you what to do, um, you're less inclined to draw what it, what it is you wanna draw, what, is, what you feel, like it's less of an artistic process. I think the New Yorker cartoons have a bit of an artistic uh, way about them because they're really coming from the cartoonist viewpoint and that's what I love about it so I, I, it's great but it, it does like so if you look at that I, I do like eight cartoons a week and I'll sell maybe once a month so you know there's a lot of cartoons that never see the light of day when I started there were not very many there were four of us at the magazine and um and you know, you didn't, I, I didn't really think about it at the time. I just wanted to be a cartoonist. I didn't really care what gender meant. I, I, I was a feminist, I, I, I always have been, but um, I didn't think that my gender had much to do with it. But I, I now know that it does. it does, it affects who you are, it affects what you draw, it affects what you write. It doesn't mean that all women draw about being women or all women draw about women's things, whatever that is, but um, you know, you have a you have a point of view of the world when you're when you're a woman, uh, and you do it when you're a man as well. So, um, so when I was starting out, I didn't think about it, but then more about ten uh, about uh, ten years ago, or more it was more than that. It was ten years ago. I began to think about it more seriously and uh, like, why aren't there more women doing this? And I wrote a book about the women cartoonists at the magazine. And there were, there were women drawing cartoons in 1925 in, in the New Yorker, but also other places, which was really exciting to discover. There weren't that many of them, but they were there. I had to push myself to get my opinions out sometimes because my cartoons are very quiet. And uh, I, you know, I was raised with supportive environment and, um, but still, I felt, I think the culture made me feel like as a woman, I didn't have, I didn't really, I really, my opinions were not that worthwhile. Um, so I, I, even though I didn't notice that when I was in my 20s, I now look back and I see my, my former self was very quiet because of that. But I, I was like, I don't know what I'm talking about. 
I don't have a right to speak my opinions. And um, so I didn't draw really opinionated cartoons. Now I do, but I had to really push myself to, to get that out. Uh, sarcastic, uh, wry. Um, somebody called me sardonic once. <laughs> I'm a very optimistic person, but I think I have a quiet, sort of a quiet tone of voice. Um, I don't like to make fun of people particularly, so I try to keep my humor um, observant, like uh, observing culture, observing politics, making sort of making commentary on, on the stupid things that we do as human beings. The uh, magazine I work for, I get to do what I want, but I mean, that, that's to say they may not buy it, but I, there's a, a, a freedom there that you do what you want. Um, that's not like, I really respect the, the cartoonists who work for a, a daily newspaper there's not many of them left because a lot of the newspapers have died. Like the local papers have their, you know, their resident cartoonists. Those people are so, uh, so much under pressure to produce a, um, you know, an idea that will work with the audience every day and about politics. I have such respect for them. So I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's a good question. I, um, in the last five years, I started drawing on an iPad. And uh, I, like, I like both. I, you know, I, the great thing about the iPad is I can, I can draw anywhere. I mean, I can draw and send out my drawings anywhere. I go to events and I live draw what I see. I draw what I see on my tablet. Like, and then I send it out on social media immediately. So I'm usually, whoever I'm working for, if it's a news outlet or a conference of some kind, um, I work with their social media team a lot. So I will do a drawing and send it out on social media with a hashtag. And it's a way to draw attention to, to the event. I got to go to um, the women's marches and um, the Democratic Convention in 2016 and, and uh, the Oscars. I don't, it, it's really fun. So I draw, like, I draw everything I see. I draw what I see. I get to choose like behind the scenes, the person painting the Oscar statue or the woman in the funny gown talking to a man in a tuxedo. So it's, it's, a new, it's a new way to look at the news, I think. The great thing about cartoons is people, people love cartoons, you know, they love looking at cartoons. I think people grew up with, most of us grew up reading some kind of cartoon. So um, we're drawn to them. And uh, once you have people's attention, you can, you can say a lot. And sometimes cartoons speak without words. And so you can, connect with people without words and that's I think that's pretty powerful. Take care guys. Mm -hmm.